The black bows on the doors and the candles placed at the entrance to Betty's beauty salon marked the location where yet another double murder took place in San Ignacio jurisdiction. The femicide occurred around 5.30 on Saturday inside the salon in Santa Elena that is owned by Miriam Mai. The 39-year-old cosmetologist, along with her sister-in-law and employee, 29-year-old Daisy Miralda, were shot to the side of the neck and head, respectively by Mai's ex-common-law husband, Andy Busios. The murders occurred in front of patrons who were inside the establishment. One patron says that an attempt was also made on her life. Me and my friend Mary just reached like approximately five minutes. And I made it tell him what I hear, what I miss. He's not smart, right? And he made it talk to me, good, not smart, and thing, ask me how I did and what's not. And I over here, he on the phone, he said, call someone. I said, if anything happened to me, I want to make sure I call it my pay. So then I just made it tell Daisy and Betty why here. And then Daisy said, girl, he just said that because he know you and I can't tell we why it is say. And as I, we don't stop talking about him, he just come in. On the front door, and Betty with a smartphone, with a bag with a smartphone, and Betty telling no one nothing for you. Initial investigation reveals that Bustillos and Mai were recently estranged, and he was trying to reconcile the relationship. He presented Mai with a package, but when she refused to accept it, Bustillos, who is a security officer with Anchor Security Company, pulled out the 9mm firearm assigned to him and took aim at Mai's sister in law, Daisy, before turning the weapon on patrons. The last person he shot and killed was his estranged common-law wife. Andy Bosios visited Betty Saloon with the intent to reconcile the relationship with his ex-common-law wife, Miss Miriam Mai, but he was rejected in the presence of the customers that were at the saloon. As a result, he took out a 9mm pistol that he had in his possession. He took the, smart, the bag of, with the smartphone, threw it on the chair, gun, put, took out the gun, shot Daisy, come shot me, but the gun jammed. And I run and then shot out at my friend. And my friend said that he went to any gun to Betty. And he take Betty and he hold Betty and leave while. And then right there he shot Betty and let, just move his hand, make Betty drop. And then he shot himself. He may just made me go. He shot, shot car straight in my face, he pointed the gun right in my head. And I put up my purse. I know my purse couldn't see me right, but at that moment I just, and then the gun jam and so I get free run. And I run down the back of the hill and I get scraped or try to get away. Bosios then put the gun to his head and fire a single shot. All three individuals were transported to the polyclinic where Miramai and Diaz Emeralda were pronounced dead on arrival. The incident has revealed that unbeknown to their family, Mai had been living in an abusive relationship with Bustios for the past six years and several reports had been made to the police in the past month when the relationship came to an end. The motive of the murder, says Superintendent Richard Rosado, is believed to be domestic violence related. I say that because we had two incidents reported by Ms. Mai that was domestic related. The recent one was on the 3rd of April, where she made a report and Mr. Andy Bosios was charged for harm. The matter is still awaiting trial in the court. Subsequent to that, on the 9th of April, she applied for a protection order from the magistrate and the magistrate granted that protection order against Bosios. From what we heard about the witnesses that were there, the girl that was there, that uh, he used to work at Smart and he was coming from Smart, he went across to the bar and he ordered a beer and he told the girl that was working there that um, right now he will go into the salon and shut all those people that are in there. As the family grieves the deaths of Miriam and Daisy, they question whether the murders could have been prevented. Our main concern is he was a security officer, right? We understand that from SMART, he does, he does his shift as SMART, and then from there he goes en route to Three Flags. SMART on Saturdays, they close the latest by one in the afternoon. As a security company, I believe that after you're finished with your shift, you're supposed to hand in that gun. If you said your employee doesn't bring that gun, it's the responsibility of the employer to go back and look for that gun, right? So if you, put, if you do the maths from 1 to about 5.30 when the incident occurred, he had in, in his possession a firearm. And knowing that he already had reports against him, restraining order from, by my aunt and so forth, he could have been in danger, right? danger to everyone 
else out there. Those people that call themselves her friends, they aren't really her friends because if they knew what she was going through, they would try to help her regardless if she told them, you know, don't involve my family in this. I guess that they did very bad to do something like that, you know, because they, they could have saved both lives because it's my sister and my sister-in-law as well. As, as her children, I mean, it's so devastating to see two, two bodies like that. If more people would be more proactive in what they do, tragedies like these can be prevented, right? Because he would have been, if he would have turned in that firearm, he would have been in possession of that firearm again until six in the evening when he's supposed to be stationed at Three Flags. Both Mai and Miralda were the mothers of three children. Dwayne Moody for News 5.